Welcome back to Key Digital's Compass Control online training course, level C1 part two, Compass Control System Introduction, because C1 part one was introducing you to the Key Digital Compass Control brand and the training curriculum, presenting that to you, what you will learn and experience and what are the benefits of that training. C1 part two is where we get to jump into the Compass Control System. What is the Compass Control System? Defining that for you will also help you create separation and discover the differences between our product and many of the competitors out there because we certainly think we have a very powerful product here and we want you to be on board with that. Now understanding compass control really begins with understanding the background that Key Digital comes from. We again created full circle systems using all of our product categories at Key Digital. We went over this in C1 part one, the matrix switcher part, uh, which is the number one there, right in the middle. It's the middle of the system, the hub of a video distribution system. Connects many sources to many displays, allows them to be viewed at any time and in any combination on any of those displays. A distribution amplifier, which took an incoming video and audio signal and split that signal for lack of better term. A single in could go to many displays, so they all view the same thing at any time and in any combination. And if you are, C are level 1X trained, you know, uh, 1X, 2X, 3X trained, you know that we install these kind of systems, distribution amplifier systems, in very large applications, even retail electronics stores with well over 100 displays, all viewing the same HDMI, HDCP source, not a problem. Multiple signals to one input, or uh, uh, multiple signals to one input, meaning a single source is selected, right? A single source is selected and viewable. That would require a simple switcher, two inputs, one output, three inputs, one output, four inputs, one output, for example. Audio extraction, again, in the world of digital video, that HDMI is a video and audio on a single connector. Many times you need to extract that so that it can feed your multi-zone audio system or amplified audio system. And the popcorn type item, in addition to HDMI cables, is cat extenders, sending video audio control over a single cat wire. And we do that here at Key Digital with our extenders. So we, we already had this hub of the system through the matrix switcher. Anytime there was multi-zone video involved, Key Digital was at the center of the system, as the centerpiece of the system. But we were behind the scenes, right? The end user doesn't typically interact with this matrix switcher. What does the end user interact with? the control interface, and that's where Key Digital diversified our company with the introduction of Compass Control. We're now what the end user interfaces with versus the background of the system. And we're not only interfacing the end user with video and audio systems, we're also interfacing the user with various automation and third-party integration systems, video audio, lighting, HVAC, shade, security, and more. So now you say, okay, I get it. I understand what the control system is and how it is going to unify all of these various components of my audio video, automation, and integration application. What's so different about Compass Control? Well, Compass Control was released by Key Digital at a very beneficial time to us. It came out at a time when we already knew that, number one, everything's got to be on the network. Everything has to be on the network because this is the standard today. Network is everywhere. At each and every home, each and every job site, corporate, church, doesn't matter. Everything has network, right? Uh, IP, okay? Everything has a network. And we also came in at a time where we were able to realize that it wasn't gonna be about the end user saying, I need you to do this whole interface on this brand's touchscreen or that brand's touchscreen. They're gonna be saying and asking you, the integrator, I need you to put this on my tablet, right? 
This is the way that the industry has shifted. And compass control came out at a very beneficial time because we were able to realize this is the direction things were heading and we were able to back or to have, I should say, iOS as our backbone. So instead of investing years and millions and millions of dollars into hardware, uh, our own touchscreen, our own handheld, you've seen those results. The quality control from folks isn't the best, is it? The, the cost effectiveness isn't the best. What is the best is the iOS device. iOS enables intuitive user interface, cost effectiveness, and unbelievable quality control. So that is what we decided to use as our surfboard, if you will, for the tsunami that is integration, okay? So it's great, we have an app, right? It's not just an app. Every control system I'd imagine has an app. Some control systems are nothing more than an app because they don't have hardware. Key Digital has 15 years experience making hardware. The difference between Compass Control and the other guys who just have an app is that we use the iOS device as the brains of the system. So that Apple device that we know is intuitive, cost effective, high quality control is also what? A very powerful processor. Each and every iOS device in your system is its own brain to the compass controller. And that's what makes compass control unbelievably fast, where other control systems through their app require time to process the and convert the information, the communication from the iOS device into the control processor in the rack and then convert that IP communication to its RF, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Compass Control lives in the iPad. The logic, the programming, the control codes, even the code sets live in the iPad. You see? So it is an iOS brain of an IP system, an IP-based system with an iOS brain. So what does that mean to you? Number one, the controllers, the master controller hardware or the iOS controllers, they all live on the network. That means you're gonna have an unlimited amount of controllers possible because there's what, 254 unique IP addresses? And then you can open up subnet masking if you need to get more. <clears throat> so you can have as many master controllers as you'd like or need. You could have as many iOS controllers as you'd like or need. There's not only local IP communication, but also global IP communication so that the New York office could monitor or control the San Francisco office and the San Francisco office can collect status and control the New York office if you'd like. There's no such thing as a master or slave. They just communicate together on the system. There's no limitations again like other control systems present you with. And controlling of IP devices, which is a rapidly growing format to control televisions, cable and satellite set-top boxes, AV receivers. And of course, that's just identifying the audio video equipment, but also lighting systems, et cetera, et cetera. Controlling those IP controllable devices goes directly from the iOS controller when we're dealing with the iOS brain. Handheld remote communication, that's your Zigbee remote here that you see, the handheld remote, and we'll give you more information on that. That happens via Zigbee. It does happen a little differently. We'll explain all of that to you. So let's dig further into this IP-based system with an iOS brain. We designed our KDMC1000 master controller to be a lot like a Swiss Army knife. It's a very compact size, a real succinct amount of ports, okay? So that if you want to have one of these in each room, you could do that. Or if you need to stack five of them in one rack or more, of course, you could do that. That's how the MC1000 is designed. And again, we'll show you more information about that as well throughout this curriculum. But let's say, for example, you have many master controllers in the system. And of course, you have devices controlled through each respective master controller. Well you and your compass control programming will build a control tree. 
As we see here, if you follow the mouse, you're looking at one of our master controllers. You see it in its tree. If we select that device, if I click on that, then I'm, I am able to view its properties. Here's the local IP address that I set. And so now my master controller, um, we will make its connectivity with these monitors here, for example, and the key digital audio matrix switcher. And because the, the brains of the system is the iPad, when this loads in, this project, it will know that if I'm controlling any of these devices, what are called mirror one, two, three, four, five, as we name them, if I'm controlling any of those devices, I need to communicate to master controller number one or master controller number two, depending on the control tree, you see? So you build this control tree, that information loads into the master, or excuse me, into the iPad, and the iPad just knows, okay, devices A through D are connected to my master controller number one, which is this IP address. Uh, however, if I'm controlling devices E through H, then I need to be communicating with master controller number two, which is this IP address. And of course, you could have any combination of that taking place. You could have a single button press that controls all of those devices and the master controller receives a really small amount of information uh, from the iPad. All of the processing takes place in the iPad and that master controller, when you're using an iOS device is more or less a relay box. And so that master controller for us, you say, how is Compass Control so powerful? The price point of this master controller is very low because it is essentially a relay box for your iOS device when you use the iOS device as the brain. So let's look at the opposite. We just looked at many master controllers in the system. What about many iOS controllers? Well, they to just occupy an IP address. And what's cool about this is that your communication from your master controller uh, to the iOS is via IP. So not only iOS can, uh, you know, pressing a button and, and speaking to the master controller, telling it to execute some commands, but also, of course, in a bi-directional system, your master controller is going to collect information from connected devices, and it updates that information to the iOS devices via the network as well. So that is your master controller to iOS communication, but what about a new kind of bi-directional communication? What about just iOS to iOS communication? And we've done that in Compass Control. We've opened up, we've created systems with chat panels because we can call for the, the iOS keyboard. You could set variables to be globally broadcasted, their value. And one iOS device can update the value of that variable which can then be broadcast to all the iOS devices in the system. And those variables can contain events like setting a slider to a certain value or changing the color of a button. And we have a really nice video to demonstrate this. Now, pardon the appearance of the video because of the recording software. But we'll do our best to, uh, to show you just how neat this uh, IP iOS to iOS communication is. So here you see the user presses the button to power on the system, which affects the color of those buttons, knowing that the zone for the audio is on or off. And it's a variable that has a value. And if the value equals one or on, then the buttons are our red. Or if the variable equals zero or off, then the buttons are programmed to be green. Now, those are great examples of global variables, but what else should all the other controllers in the system know? They should also know what is the selected source for each zone of audio. So here, for example, we the user goes through and chooses different audio sources and it updates the state of the button to be a larger icon and the blue text. What else should be a global variable or a globally known status is the volume level for that audio zone. And you see one iPad is able to control that custom made volume slider. 
and even our up and down arrows to incrementally control the volume. And of course, there are no masters or slaves in compass control so the user can control from controller number two and you see how fast these items synchronize updating the value for all of the controllers in the system to know the status of the volume level. So this is the controller to controller communication where the value of a variable is ultimately what's being broadcast and those variables have the events on them to change the graphical appearance of things of our elements within our GUI and this is very cool uh, you should keep in mind of course this is not information collected from the external device and broadcasted this is controller to controller uh, but both forms from the external device or controller to controller are totally possible in compass control so now let's look at what happens when we ha add a handheld remote to the system. Well, our current handheld remote model is KDZRC300, and we'll tell you more about that. It stands for Zigbee Remote Control 300 because it communicates bidirectionally via Zigbee to the KDZRX200, as you'd see depicted in the system design. That's your receiver, transceiver, I should say, transceiver antenna, which connects into the KDMC1000 on the Zigbee port. So the ZRC300 presents a shift in how Compass Control has worked before the release of this handheld remote. How did it work previously? The iOS device was the brain. However, with the release of the handheld remote control, we also had to go and release a new master controller as a result because the MC1000 needs to, or the master controller needs to store knowledge. It itself needs to be a brain. So in the case of having your handheld remote control, the KD MC1000 actually now becomes the brain of the system. So when you press a button on the handheld remote control, it just communicates to the master controller what button has been pressed. The events in macros and, and, and all of those things are actually stored in the master controller and of course executed by the master controller. Even the TCP IP commands uh, are executed in the master controller through that RJ45 port, which is connected to your network. And then via the local area network, your IP controllable devices are, uh, are controlled. Now, the handheld remote control also supports line of sight IR. Okay. And we'll teach you more about the KDZRC300 throughout the uh, C1 level, including how to program that. Now, what about if you'd like to have Zigbee, the handheld remote control, plus iOS devices? Okay, well, this is uh, ultimately the iOS device becomes its or is its own brain uh, for each and every iOS device. And the master controller is the brain for the Zigbee remote control. So this is what separates the key digital compass control offering from other control systems out there that have handheld remotes and have the iOS app. Um, we could have as many unique iOS devices in the system as you'd like when you complement the uh, iOS devices with the Zigbee. Now, what is the current limitation is that one unique Zigbee project can be loaded per master controller. Okay, one unique project. And we'll teach you about what this means, okay? But of course, if you'd like to have two unique Zigbee remote controllers, meaning they have different commands and events stored on them, well then, you're gonna need to have or you can have two master controllers two mc 1000s and that's not a problem and you could then have as many ipads as you'd like and they could speak to any master controller in the system via ip via the network as we described earlier so when the master controller is the brain it can also store variable values so you could turn on the room and a graphic can be updated in the iPad because your event and action can be broad, uh, can be stored on the variable and that variable's value can be broadcast globally just as we demonstrated a few minutes ago 
via iOS to iOS communication, now the master controller can update those variables as well and those values. Uh, so a button press can execute events and cause uh, actions and, and graphical updates in the iPad, in fact, which is a really, really cool thing. So <clears throat> the system benefits of compass control. Now you understand how it works, the iOS brain of the system, the IP communication of the system, very powerful. Um, what other benefits do we offer you through compass control? Well, we're a company that understands that you, don't, you most likely don't like to be told what to purchase. So instead of trying to create our own or to sell you our own products for every single category, we're a company, Key Digital Compass Control, that would rather partner with the people in the industry who are the best at what they do. Those people are all Compass Alliance partners. And that most typically represents that we're going to have a bi-directional driver available for you but it's not always necessary to have a bi-directional driver so this is not necessarily the uh, ultimate list of our bi-directional drivers that are available and we made a goal to set out and partner with the best at different price points as well because compass control is a very cost effective model it could fit into all of the smaller price point, medium price point, and high price point jobs. And we could surround ourselves with those through our Compass Alliance partners. Now, some of those partners are automation systems. Um, just like you're taking this class to learn how about Compass Control and how to program Compass as you continue through the C1, C2, and C3 courses, You've probably had to do those exact same uh, steps to further your education with these automation partners. So we have many automation systems that we understand you have to program it in their software. You don't want to program it in our software. So we actually have partnered with the likes of uh, Lutron, Leviton, for example, and more. And we allow you to program those systems, program them completely, and we can import that programming, uh, for example, with Lutron, their XML report can be imported into the Compass Control uh, system and Compass Navigator, and we will automatically populate the pages, the commands, the variables, everything we need for what we support the, that automation system so that you can program it in that other software, but not have to program it twice. Again, in Compass Control, it will happen automatically. And of course, that means it's more of a fixed look and feel. If you'd like to do something a little more flexible, a little more custom look and feel, you could do that as well. So I've been mentioning variables a few times here over the last few minutes. Um, we're a company that, or we're a product that fully supports variables, not just if statements, okay? Integer, that's whole numbers. Um, it's 64-bit system, in fact. String, that's all ASCII characters. Boolean, that is true or false. And floating, which is numerical value with decimal places. Those variables can be global, meaning they're broadcast globally. Everybody should know about this. For example, what is the volume in zone five? Don't you think all of your iOS controllers should know what is the volume of zone five if they have that page for zone five, for example? or they could be a variable that lives locally within the iOS device. And when you do that, it really enables you through uh, really going all the way through C3, you'll learn how you can store events on variables, which make those variables multidimensional because those variables can steer the ship for your system. And all of that logic, all of that, uh, all of that steering is stored in one place so that then it becomes a very flexible interface as well so that you can roll this interface out time after time after time and just tweak a few things in the system versus having to recreate that GUI over and over and over again. We support indexing and array variables and our bi-directional drivers are written in basic C. And if you'd like to find out more information about that, you need to reach out to tech at keydigital.com to set you up with one of our driver developers. So if you're wondering if this system has the capabilities, the answer is yes. And through the time that Compass Control has been uh, in the marketplace, we've now seen some very cool GUIs released. <clears throat> 
because these integrators, the programmers, love our software, love that it is that blank tablet, blank palette on the iOS device. It allows them to fit their needs perfectly. Now, <clears throat> what makes a great compass control GUI? Well, to answer that question, you should first, of course, have an understanding what is a GUI. Well, basically it replaces the old fashioned way of interfacing, communicating to and from uh, or, you know, a computer to a connected device, right? Like RS-232, what did you do? You would type a command, you would see a response. You maybe even send some kind of help command that could tell you exactly all of the other commands you could send the device. <clears throat> so a GUI, in other words, fills two needs, satisfies two needs. What is the status of the system and how can I manipulate the system? Just like when you would communicate via RS-232 an, 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 uh, through an old fashioned uh, interface, right? What is the status of the system and how can I manipulate that system? In order to uh, build these uh, excellent GUIs and, and deliver an effective GUI, Compass Control uses graphical elements. We call them elements, not buttons, for example, because button is a, is an analog button, we're digital, okay? This is a GUI. So what are those elements? Image, that's self-explanatory, right? Text, that's also self-explanatory, except for, you know, you can make text editable. So in your interface, you could press the text and have the Apple keyboard come up and it, and it could also tell you, what is the password? Or ask you, please enter the password. You could type that in to gain access to other parts of the interface, for example. Uh, button, our buttons, we could have four states to our buttons, up, down, obviously you understand those, over, which is more of a status indicating state, and dis, disabled, meaning you can't press it, just like something being grayed out on your computer. A list, a list actually enables that uh, very popular swipe or flick gesture control over the iPad <clears throat> or on the iOS device. It's been very popular now since iOS and it's really incorporated in all the tablets out there, for example. Um, a slider for volume control, lighting control, those sorts of things. A group, which is any and all of these element types nested within a single uh, casing, if you will. And finally, multimedia. Multimedia elements we use to um, embed the web into, Compass, into the Compass Control app so that you can uh, uh, go to your favorite news site, for example. You could have your room wizard software for corporations in the Compass Control app. So not only controlling the audio video system of the conference room, boardroom, executive boardroom, but also now scheduling the next meeting that you guys are gonna have within the Compass Control system. Uh, multimedia elements are also what we use to specifically identify uh, external apps that are loaded onto the iPad uh, and jump discreetly into them through multimedia elements on the apps which support that. So now let's look at some of these GUIs just to get your creativity going and uh, get you excited about this and, and just uh, tell you the story of how these uh, GUIs came about. Now this was actually a very early adopter to Comp Compass Control. This is a uh, hotel chain, a, a, an international hotel chain, which has invested into putting many uh, of these four x four video walls into their lobby and, uh, and common areas and uh, dining area. And uh, this is a partner of ours, this video wall. And initially these installations were only uh, controlled by a very expensive computer. And of course that meant that only a few folks would have access to that computer. And very quickly our partner realized <clears throat> that this wouldn't really come to full fruition if they couldn't get the cost of this uh, control system under under control, let's say, <laughs> pardon the pun. Um, and so that's when they partnered with us and we made a very, very uh, thorough uh, library of all of the codes to uh, manipulate the video wall panels and the configuration of the video wall. And this just tells the, this satisfies very simply the two needs for a good GUI. What is the status of the system? Well, I'm in full wall mode on the left and that button holds blue. They wanted to call it video wall, that's fine. Uh, and on the right, I press that quadrant wall button and it manipulates the system. It sends all uh, the commands necessary for those panels to break into four quadrants. 
And if I want to control one of those quadrants, I just press one of those quadrants and now the control panel will apply to the video source on that specific quadrant. So what is the status of the system and how to control the system? Very easily understood just by looking at the interface. Now here is uh, an, an example of starting with what we provide you. We do have a number of pre-built templates, remember, in this, uh, after gaining C3 certification. And, you, and the programmer said, well, this is great. I really like your flagship look and feel, which we'll go more into in uh, the next course. Um, but for audio, I'd like to have these little tiles for each zone and they just press an audio button because it's not so control oriented in the audio side of things as it is on the video side of things. So <clears throat> the programmer made these tiles for zones and for sources and gave us a call and we said, hey, that looks excellent. Good job. He said, well, no, it's not as good as you think because what do I do about controlling the, the selected audio source? How do I control it? I've ran out of real estate. And so we kind of consolidated those buttons across the bottom row and put that silver remote there. That silver remote calls a control panel visible. So this control panel that you see is always there. It's just invisible. And that means it's not going to interfere with anything. You're not going to press those buttons uh, because you don't see it, right? And so you go ahead, you control, you do what you need to do. And then you just press this corner button in order to move or to uh, make that control group invisible once again. So very cool. Now here's a, a corporate uh, template that's very, very popular. We actually created this one uh, for our um, <clears throat> bi-directional driver with a very popular video conferencing device. And so with that bi-directional driver, what you see in the bottom right corner here, favorites and directory, all of that information automatically populates based on your programming of that third-party video conferencing device. And in fact, if you download the Compass Control app, this is one of our commercial demos. And we'll tell you more about all of those residential and commercial demos as we go. But nice big buttons here, right? Which was really, really important um, because we know that in the corporate world, uh, sometimes the higher you go up the pay scale even, the bigger the buttons need to be and the more simplistic the interface needs to be. And this certainly satisfies that and makes a lot of our clients happy in the installations that's gone into. Now here's a really uh, excellent, excellent interface that I love to tell the story about. This is an integrator who um, actually had sold a uh, system a few years uh, prior to this uh, school. And uh, the school was very happy with their previous system. They actually, that system included one of our analog uh, component video matrix switchers at the time. But the school came to the integrator and said, hey, we are beginning to do more and more of this uh, Apple AirPlay and we need a system that is uh, going to enable us to do that. Of course, the answer then becomes transitioning that video system into digital video, HDMI. And at the same time as presenting the digital video system, the integrator said, you really got to check out this control system that that same manufacturer, Key Digital, has released because this compass control is five years plus ahead of that old control system we use. How did he come up with the number five years? Well, he had been to training, uh, he had been to trainings for that other control system. And for five years, they've been promising that they would do things like support volume sliders like Key Digital did upon its release. So he created this interface. It got installed in the auditorium at this uh, school. And so this system actually has seven iPads on there. And everybody from the school principal to the band director and the gym coach has their own iPad. And they go home with it at night and they come back into the auditorium. And guess what happens? As soon as they jump on that network, those statuses, volume levels and mute, unmute or latched, unlatched, those statuses renew and the GUI just comes to life updating correctly as soon as it collects all of that information via the network. So it's super, super cool system. Seven iPads working that way, uh, maybe even more now. And since then, he's just absolutely been on fire. Other private schools in the area or other schools in the area go in. Uh, when there's an event in the auditorium, like basketball games and assemblies, they see this system that is just out of this world and uh, enabling the, the school to present in a more 
uh, user-friendly way and everybody loves it and so they've even now installed uh, two more systems within that same school as well and it's just been really really a great success story now here's somebody who decided to do something very different and they just decided to use that whole interface in what is more similar to our modular layout that we'll teach you about uh, in the next course uh, where you have all of the real estate dedicated to controlling a single device. And what they did was they just made their own shapes and everything and they put our buttons over those, over those shapes. And even though our buttons are invisible, uh, they actually, they're not invisible, they just have no image file. So they were able to just drag, drop, and put the appropriate command on there and, and make a really unique experience, uh, their own unique package and uh, something that you can't find anywhere else very simplistically. Here's a, an integrator who is also very good at graphics and came into our class and, and liked a lot of what we offered with our flagship interface. Again, we'll show you more about that. Um, but they wanted to do their own thing with it as well and they wanted to make it so that you don't have to jump pages to view a different source. So they kind of shrunk down the, the size dedicated, allotted to the zone image and put the source buttons for audio and video, etc., across the uh, upper middle of the screen. And it really just makes for a super unique interface that now this is this integrator's branding. This is something nobody else has. And this is something we boast about here at Key Digital with these Compass custom GUIs is that I could go into your town and train 20 or 30 integrators and I'm not creating 20 or 30 competitors because Compass Control enables that fully flexible, fully customizable interface. And really it's just on the strength of your programming that you're competing, not on price point alone, which when you're dealing with kind of one of those cookie cutter systems, that's all you could really compete on. Now here's a nice uh, system here. I mentioned earlier in this training, in fact, that IP controllable devices just get controlled directly from the iPad. Those IP codes live in the iPad and it's just going to communicate via the network directly to those IP controllable devices um, <clears throat> when you're dealing, you know, when you're controlling that device from the iPad. Then I taught you that the Zigbee remote actually does go through the master controller then to the IP device. But when you're dealing with the iPad, you don't utilize any port on the control system on the master controller in order to control IP controllable devices. Now that being said, you do 100% always need at least one master controller in the system. We see that on the left hand side at the bottom left corner. However, I'll have you know, nothing's even connected to that master controller. So this is an integrator who works here in New York City and has a number of clients who are just fed up with an RF based control system that is just not reliable in a heavy city. Uh, you know, with all the radio frequency and the interference, a city like New York is not very conducive to, to an RF based control system. So he said, I'm gonna move everything to Wi-Fi to, the, to, to uh, IP, excuse me. And he said, here's what I'm gonna do. Those 24 DirecTV boxes, which are IP controllable, I'm just gonna put them in the system. The iPad is just gonna control whatever uh, the keypad is entered. So he named those DirecTV boxes that are IP controllable, he named them numerically, and he has a variable control so that when he presses you know, the CNN button, the CNN favorite channel macro is sent to cable box 24, or DirecTV box 24. It's sent to that device. So he actually has a variable on each button that, uh, or a command that is driven by a variable. It controls a variable device. So he was able to do this in about 20 minutes, make the keypad, uh, set of, make a variable instead of having 24 remotes, one remote that is controlling a variable device. So between the IP based communication and the variable powers that we present at Key Digital, uh, this is just a win-win situation that he's able to roll out to all sorts of jobs. You saw this one a moment ago in, the, uh, in that video 
And uh, we really love this one because it is just, it epitomizes custom. <laughs> Every button is actually custom made. Uh, we import PNG images into our software. Uh, PNG images can be imported. And, uh, and for our slider, for example, there's two image files on it, a, what we call a min and a max, or what you could call an empty and a full in the case of this beer glass slider. And since then, we've done everything from uh, beer glasses to wine glasses to whiskey bottles in these bar restaurant applications. And it's just a touch, uh, a, a custom touch that only compass control can enable. Here's a cool system because again, another early adopter to uh, compass control. And they did two things here that I want to tell you about. Number one, you see it on the right. This was an integrator who integrated theatrical lighting, LED lighting via the compass control system. Uh, DMX control through uh, through a third party uh, interface adapter. Uh, DMX systems controllable through compass control with up to currently up to four parameters. So the red, green, blue, and white levels. Um, and the other thing I want to tell you about though is in fact this is not this is not the very first interface that this uh, integrator uh, created for this application. This was at his one year warranty checkup uh, in between the uh, initial installation and, uh, and the one year warranty checkup, Apple had released iOS 7, which really shifted the look of the iPad. So he said, well, you know what? I've, done, I've got more experience programming compass control interfaces now. I want to present something. I want to have something here that really uh, reflects what has happened with Apple iOS 7 and he so he really uh, he he changed things to a lot of white coloring and light colors as you see and so it's just really uh, been an unbelievable experience and that was at a uh, at a at a theater uh, type room um, uh, at a at a museum in fact so compass control just going into all sorts of different application types Sometimes folks say, hey, I'd like to just have the floor plan of the job site in the iPad. And of course, it's just a PNG image. So what you see on the left there is the floor plan with some of our buttons on top because there are different depth levels. Depth is like bring to front. The higher the depth level, the higher, or the closer to your eyes, if you will. So the depth level is a little higher on those buttons that say TV one, two, and three. You select those and you can change your source. Or when you press audio, then that interface just changes over and kind of breaks that, uh, that seating area into the different audio zones. And here's a really excellent example of a, uh, yet another uh, compass control programmer who is just unbelievably gifted at uh, graphic design as well. And, um, and uh, this is a guy who, you know, he, he took, he, he, got, he was awarded a great job uh, with a, uh, a chain uh, of restaurants in Canada. And, and uh, he said, you know what, instead of putting a lot of effort and time into designing my own interface, which I know I could do, would look amazing, et cetera, et cetera, I'm just going to go to their website or go to their menu and I'm going to take their look and feel because they can't argue with that, can they? They're the ones who created it. And uh, so he took a lot of images from the website, from the menu. He, of course, created uh, a lot of things as well, like you see the uh, buttons for your displays and sources and that sort of thing. And I'd be willing to bet they didn't have little TV icons like that on their website. So a lot of those were designed by this programmer as well. But altogether, it just comes out looking amazing and really showcasing what could be done with compass control to have it look and feel however you like, uh, especially uh, representing your clients in the best light. So um, let's review this introduction to the compass control system where we went over what first, what really separates compass control? The iOS brain. It's an IP based system with an iOS brain. We talked about what it means to have that uh, IP uh, communication, uh, as many master controllers as you'd like, or infinite, uh, as many controllers, iOS controllers as you'd like. Then we talked about introducing the Zigbee based handheld remote uh, into systems uh, by themselves, where the master controller becomes more of the brain, right? Or 
together with complementing an iOS device or devices in the system in which the master controller is the brain when uh, commands are executed by our buttons are pressed on the handheld remote and the iOS device is the brain when uh, again commands are executed buttons are pressed on the iOS device so two separate brains in that case um, the Compass Alliance partners and by the way if you have a need to uh, open up uh, or to, 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 to forge a partnership between Key Digital Compass Control and another manufacturer that you don't see listed on our website, uh, please send those requests over to us. Uh, tech at Key Digital would be a good place to start. We'll forward it to the appropriate people here. And again, that, <clears throat> that doesn't necessarily mean uh, or, or totally reflect our full list of bidirectional control drivers. And then variable support. Uh, it's a huge, huge thing. Variables, uh, because they are able to be either global or local, because they are so multidimensional <clears throat> by storing events on those variables, and even because you can have a value, uh, a variable, which uh, the value of that variable will be the name of the device you're controlling, as we showed in one of those custom GUIs. Getting used to using those variables is really going to make a flexible and powerful system for you. And then we went over our favorite custom GUIs since the introduction of Compass Control. So that does it for C1 Part 2. We want to thank you very much for viewing, and we'll see you at C1 Part 3.